and you know how you know how we are we're very respectful of time and so dan uh typically this is a uh, uh an audience that arrives around 10 32 to 10 33 so but i'm so grateful for those that are on it uh already and uh, i'm i'm really excited about uh Dan, delivering any message you've got on your heart, because uh, one, I think you already know the uh, the respect I have for you and in uh, your family. Uh, and, and on top of everything else, and this really isn't important, he's he's another Baylor man. So, <laughs> uh, so you guys don't hold that against him, please, because uh, I think uh, even being uh, from a, a Southern Baptist University, sometimes hey, we can still bring the meat each and every week. That's what it's all about. So sick of my brother, it's uh, it's all on you and uh, the floor is yours. So I appreciate you. Well, I appreciate that very much. Uh, you know, it's good to see, I, I see people on here that I know, you know, shoot, you, you walk in pretty good company. You've got, I didn't know you had a movie star on here and- uh, uh, I know, Brad Pitt, right? I love it. everyone through and, uh, but, <laughs> Um, now I appreciate it. You got one of my good buddies on there, uh, Julian, who, uh, who, uh, uh, I met a while back. Uh, if, if you want some good French baked goods, he's the man. Um, but, uh, yeah, Ben, thank you very much guys. Um, I don't know about y'all, but my mind at times is like an old cold lawnmower that you're starting up after the winter season, getting ready to go mow the yard. You got to go out and tune that engine up. You got to go out and get new, sometimes new spark plugs. Uh, sometimes uh, you may have to crank that engine, pull it eight or nine times without trying to flood it. Uh, I love those lawnmowers that you can go out there and I mean, it, it's on the first pole or it's the second pole, man, it's fired up and it's ready to cut through lawn. You got a sharp blade, you can get out there. Now, I don't know how many of y'all still do your yards um that was one of the first things and uh my wife when i got into real estate i'm sure you guys uh who are responsible for that part of the taking care of a house uh she's like if you're gonna do this job you're gonna be gone on the weekends uh then you're gonna either have to let me get a maid or we're gonna have to figure something out on the yard but uh i've always considered that therapy uh, I'm not here to talk to you about how to mow a yard or cut the grass or blow the, the grass clippings off. Um, but I, I bring that up because that's the way I am each morning when I get my mindset going. And I have to mentally prepare for each day. I, I am, there is no exception. If you see me come in and I'm, uh, I'm not being nice or I'm not being friendly or I'm not being, you know, uh, an extrovert and uh, wishing you good morning is probably because I did not start my day right. And I'm a big believer. If you want to do anything in life, uh, you've got to put it out there ahead of time. Uh, I want to talk to you today about intentionality, being intentional with your day. Um, uh, what if you made the decision you're going to do today? You know, some people get up and they don't make the decision they're going to decide to do something. They're going to let the day decide it for them and they're just going to react. And um, and I've just found for me personally, after doing this for as many years as I have, I know there's people who have done it longer than me. Um, uh, I see a lot of people that show up not ready to go. Uh, I've got people on my team that I have to talk to from time to time. Say, hey, dude, you're not showing up. I, you know, Ben, I know you played football for a while and uh, a coach knows when his player is ready to, to play. I used to coach real estate agents and I used to coach leaders on teams. And the one thing I learned is my first few clients, I didn't get it. But after I started figuring out, I'm like, oh, I know how to get the, I, I told my clients before I ever started coaching, them, I said, look, we need to have a conversation right now that when you show up, you're prepared. If you don't come prepared, please call me. Let's reschedule for another day because quite frankly, you're wasting your time, but you're wasting my time. And I've, I've prepared to be ready for this call. So I need you to show up and be ready for this call. And, and I would just tell them up front, you have permission to check out if you don't want to be here today because we only want the best, okay? 
So a coach knows when his players show up ready to go. That when a coach, when a player shows up, they were intentional with their mind, with their actions, ready to go. When a play, when it's an agent came in and meet with me, I still get coached to this day. And I've told my coach, if I do not feel, if I don't taste blood in my mouth at the end of our call, I feel like you've not done your job for me. I want you to push me. I want you to help me taste a little blood. So it causes me to be uncomfortable. When I'm uncomfortable, I'm going to change. If I'm not uncomfortable, I'm going to stay the same. So how are you showing up to do this? Uh, you know, every day you can choose, intentionally choose to have peace. Or you can say, I'm not going to, I'm not choosing to have peace. And you let the chaos rule the day. Uh, you can choose to have forgiveness. Some of you might be, uh, have family or teammates on your team that it just causes chaos in your life. I've got, you know, on every team, there's someone that causes a little extra chaos and then more than they should. And I have to choose going in when I know that person's coming in, how I'm going to act before I get in front of that person. If I let that person choose how I'm going to act, it's going to mess everything else up. Even my choice to be joyful, despite the chaos going around me, that's a choice. Uh, you can forgive before it even happens. I know that we've got, you know, when Thanksgiving takes place, we all get together with our families. I don't know about y'all. Y'all probably have perfect families. Uh, there's always somebody who comes in who's going to say something. Maybe you're not on the same side politically and someone brings something up or may, whatever it is. I always have to remind myself when I go into the holidays, all right, I am going to choose to have the best holiday possible. I'm not going to let anybody affect me. It's being intentional. Uh, astronaut Jim Lovell, uh, Lowell, excuse me, uh, was on Apollo 13. And if you remember that fateful sentence, what did he say when they're up in space? Anybody remember the phrase he said? That we have a problem or not? Houston, we have a problem. We have a problem. Mm -hmm. We have a problem. Uh, by his voice, you could tell that he, he did not choose panic or he didn't choose fear. He chose peace in that moment because that was going to be what's the best thing that's going to serve you? Panic and fear or peace? When you're in a transaction with somebody, what are you choosing ahead of time that you've, you've been through so many transactions, you know what's coming. So we can either let them experience it and then try to help them come out of that. Or you can tell them, hey, this is what is going to happen. Jim Lowe and all his astronauts, before they ever climbed up in that capsule and they went up there, they went through every scenario ahead of time. My dad was a pilot for years with Braniff Airlines before they bellied up in 82. I remember being a, um, gosh, I remember being seven or eight years old. My dad drove a Mercury Capri. I don't know if y'all remember what a 1972 red Mercury Capri. It was fast, it was ugly, but it was a stick shift and it could move. And my dad would drive along in the car and I'd go on an errand with him and I'd be sitting in the front seat when little kids could sit in the front seat back then. And he'd put this big three ring binder on my lap and he says, open it to any page. This was a flight manual that they had to constantly go through. Whenever you get on a plane, I always just out of my dad being a pilot for so many years, when I walk on a plane, I always look left and I'm looking for the captain and I'm looking for the co-pilot. And because those are the two guys we need to be up at the front. And if you are up there, things have changed. They now work off iPads and they can snap it in place and they go through a checklist. The captain goes through his, the co-pilot goes through his. And if you ever watch him, you'll see him in there while the plane's sitting there, you'll see him touching things on the ceiling and and I remember asking my dad, I said, what are they doing up there? He says, they're checking to make sure, even though this is an older plane or a new plane, they're going through and making sure all the systems are set ahead of time. They are preparing for anything. So my dad had opened this notebook. He says, I don't care where you look, grab the sheet of paper, point to it, tell me the topic, and I'm going to tell you the systems and the sequence we're going to go through in case this happens. And he would go verbatim, would read off everything. He wouldn't read it. He would have it all memorized. Now, they always had these with them. If you go back in the, the plane that crashed on the Hudson, that captain, if you watch him, he went through the whole process of how he was going to land that plane because the plane had taken a bird in the, the engine, and he went through the crash sequence of what's going to take place, and they do this ahead of time. 
he was being intentional. He made a decision before he got on that plane how they were going to act. What was going to happen if this scenario happened? With all the different scenarios that could happen in a transaction, what are you going to do ahead of time? There was a, this last year, Ben will get this. I don't know if this ever happened with the Baylor Bears. I have to think it did. Uh, Michigan State was playing a game this last year, and they had a, uh, at half, uh, the first half, they played this game and they just were off. Uh, things came up and they just did not respond. So the coach, being a good coach, went in at halftime and he goes, guys, did that go the way we wanted to? It didn't go the way we wanted to. He says, all right. He says, let's think of right now, what are all the potential scenarios that are going to come up in the second half? We got to play catch up, number one. But if something comes up as a negative, let's go ahead and talk about it right now, what we're going to do. Because what I want to happen is when you're out there, you're not going to you're not going to be in a situation where you're trying to think about it. If you ever go watch guys play baseball, even pros to this day, if there's someone on first base and the pitcher is on the, the mound before he throws that first pitch, knowing he's got to go on first base. What does he typically do with the second baseman? He looks at the second baseman, and he goes. He's looking at him like, hey, they don't say anything. They look at each other and going, and what they're doing, if you're not a big baseball fan, they're going, hey, we know that guy's coming to second. I'm coming to you if that ball comes to me. I'm turning around. I'm coming right to you. They're already talking about it ahead of time. They're, make, they're being intentional with their decision. This is what Michigan State did. They ended up going out, and they came back and won this game because they knew all the snares would come up, what they were going to have to do to react. They reacted because they knew exactly what they needed to do. There's another guy, I'm an analogy guy. There's a guy by the name of uh, George Shotgun Chuba. Now, I don't think there's anybody on here who's old enough to remember who that guy is, but he was a baseball player back in the uh, 30s. And um, one of the things that he was well known for is he, he was not an exceptional baseball player. He was just above average, but he was not the guy who was going to play and be in the hall of fame one day. And, but the one thing he knew he could do, he goes, he was short enough, but tall enough where he had a good swing and he goes, I can get better at swinging the bat. So every day during the season in the morning, before he went out to practice, he goes swing the bat 200 times and he'd, he'd get his, his arm upright, his bat upright, and he'd come around. He started creating this muscle memory. And he did it before the games. During the off season, he would sometimes he'd swing that many, but he during the off season ended up being like he swung it like twenty thousand times during the off season. And it's just creating that muscle memory, and knowing what he had to do. And he had a great average because of what he did when he wasn't playing. Are you playing ahead of time, planning ahead of time, being intentional with your time ahead of time, for when you are in that game time situation with your buyer or seller? Do you know what to say? By the way, is the market changing day by day right now? I don't know about you. Negotiation strategies, uh, how to help your buyer win, how to help your seller get the best terms possible. Man, things are changing by the moment. And if you're not a student in the game, quite frankly, uh, it's going to be a challenge. Uh, masterminding, getting together with people. Hey, what are you seeing right now? How are you reacting in this moment? Being intentional with our actions is wise. I'm going to leave you with this. Uh, there's a, a statement that was taught to me a long time ago. And, and I, I, I've told my kids a hundred times. Uh, I work with kids uh, in my church and the youth uh, group. And, and, and I share this all the time. When the values are clear, the decisions are easy. I know some of y'all probably have heard that. When you are so in tune with your values ahead of time, your intentional ahead of time, when the game time comes up, you'll know how to act. I'd always say to my kids, before you go to that party, what's your values? I don't do this. I don't do this. Okay, so if it's presented to you at the party, you already know ahead of time what decision you're going to make. So if you have the values up front, it makes life so much easier on the backside. You don't have to worry about thinking because you 
you already know what it is. My dad was clear on the values of what he needed to do to get ready before he flew that plane. There was a hundred people behind him depending on him to make sure he had done his homework. Can you imagine your pilot not being prepared? Now we're sitting here, we're playing with clients, hundreds of thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. Have you done the homework to give them the absolute best advice possible as a buyer's agent? What about as a listing agent? What kind of value are you bringing? I'm going to give you guys a, a, a plug. Uh, if you did not watch Ann LaCusta's uh, most regent, recent talk uh, about providing value to your buyers, it just came out. I just got the email. If you haven't seen it, go ask Teresa Flood to send it to you. I just got done watching it. And it talks about all the different values that you bring as a buyer and how you can defend what you're worth. And so anyway, I hope this has been helpful, you guys. And, you know, I appreciate Ben asking me because more uh, uh, honestly, I'm talking to myself right now. I'm having a conversation with myself and I've got to be reminded if you don't have a game plan each day that you consistently follow guys, put one together. You know, what time do you get up in the morning? I've got a couple of agents on my team. They've gotten better, but they were in their 20s. And they would still sleep until 7, 30, 8 o'clock in the morning. You know, I don't know any about y'all guys, but as you get older, that becomes more difficult. I do everything I can just to get to 6 o'clock in the morning. It doesn't happen very often. And uh, so if you're counting to go to get to bed or wake up early or wait till you get older, it'll happen for you. Or better yet, take two big drinks of water at about 10 o'clock at night and you'll wake up ask ben uh uh you know ask scott <laughs> so anyway hey guys i appreciate you i'm glad you're partners of mine in the the office if i can ever be of help to you i'd love to help out well thanks for pointing out our age and uh we, we love yeah. you brother let, let me just let me summarize this briefly and i and i appreciate you hitting it um be prepared because it helps you react without thinking. I heard that. Uh, who you surround yourself with matters. Uh, who you're in business with matters. Um, how you show up every day matters. So I just want, I want to, I want to leave that. I want to leave that on your mind. And Dan, I, I appreciate you bringing the meat. What do I say? Every week I bring the meat, right? Guys, and I appreciate you guys who chimed in this week. Let me tell you next week, um, we've got, um, uh, we've got we, the next two weeks are about the most unique we've, we've ever had on this show. Uh, I've got a guy who's in an industry. See you, Dan. Appreciate you, brother. Go hey, thanks, guys. Bears. Appreciate you. That, Take um, care. You got it. That's in an industry that's not like ours. So um, I, I think you're going to get a lot of value. Christina, someone raised their hand, I think. Um, can you see if that was someone? If so, take yourself off mute for a second. And uh, we're out of here. If I if I miss that, if I'm um, if not, then we're we're good to go. Uh, does someone have a question? And if so, it was probably for Dan, who's gone. So uh, anyway, guys, again, I appreciate you. Uh, let's go. Uh, let's go serve the needs of our clients, and uh, more importantly, let's go take a listening. How about that? <laughs>